Oh, hi, Udi. How are you? I'm great, Pete. Good to see you again. I am so pumped to have you here today. I think you were a, uh, a last minute addition to uh, Camp Modern Sales uh, agenda here just because of some of the rad announcements that are coming out of Gong. So I am very pumped that you were willing to spend some time to talk with our audience here about what's happening on happening in, uh, in Gong land. So thank you very much. You got a lot to cover. Lot happy. happy to be here. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, everyone, thank you very much for, for joining us today. Uh, I'm super pumped to have uh, Udi here today. For folks who are not um, familiar, my name is Pete Kazanji. I'm one of the founders of Atrium. We make data-driven sales management software that helps sales organizations improve the performance of their teams through the smart application of data. Um, and, and of course, more importantly, we have Udi here today from Gong, who previously has joined us in his capacity as CMO, but now has a shiny new title. Uh, Udi, maybe first and foremost, um, since like, you know, the modern sales community is very familiar with Gong and very familiar with you, maybe you can kind of update folks on your, your new role and what that includes. Yeah, absolutely, Pete. So the, 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 the honest truth is that I just wanted to be CEO. So I looked for a title with the same acronym, CEO. I became chief evangelist officer. But obviously. <laughs> More seriously, uh, for most of the last seven years, I was the chief marketing officer at Gong. I came in as employee number 13 and marketer number one. And after almost seven years of building this amazing powerhouse of brand and category and uh, 60 strong marketing team. Uh, it was Content. Hard. Say again? Content. Content, I yes. think everyone... The Don't forget the, con the content. But, uh, the content engine is, is bananas. So uh, it was time to uh, to bring in a new awesome CMO, Brian, who has seen the next level of growth that we're going we're going to go through. So you know, you could say I took the company from zero to a few hundreds of millions in revenue, and now it's his uh, thankless job to take it from a few hundreds of millions to a few billions. So uh, I'm here to support uh, Brian and the team, and I'm now chief evangelist, which I see as an extension of marketing. And in my new capacity, I get to do uh, awesome speaking opportunities like this one today that would have been much trickier to negotiate and find a time for if I were still running the, the entire marketing team. So I get to do these fun uh, things. I get to do a lot of executive alignments. So I speak with CROs, with CMOs and other executives, whether they're prospects or customers, and without trying to sell them anything kind of show them the full potential of how we could be helping them and solving their biggest st strategic initiatives chief evangelist chief sales engineer you know we got the whole like the whole thing going on um that's awesome i, l I like to joke about how one of my roles here at atrium um, we're not quite the same size as Gong, so you know we're not able to have like a full time, yeah. an, an FTE that is the uh, the chief evangelist. But I call it the dancing bear. You get to be the dancing bear, go up on stage, you know, go to these virtual events, etc. That's primarily my role at Atrium yeah. as well. So we have we have like we have dancing bear, uh, you know, we have dancing bear vibes here. Um, Awesome. Well, well. So I think like the big thing that we're, we're going to talk about today is some of the some of the big stuff that Gong has been doing in the sales engagement space and, and kind of like AI powered sales engagement. But I think before we kind of get into that, one of the things I wanted to talk about is, you know, this isn't really Gong's first rodeo when it comes to AI, AI stuff. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny because I think that, you know, historically, there was like this moment when everyone like slapped a dot AI on the back of their uh, their domain and they were like, all right, cool. We've got the AI, got the bumper sticker, slap the hood, we're good. And and I think it, it didn't like show up more outwardly to like users. It was more kind of like in the guts, if you will. Um, but I think that you guys definitely had a non-trivial amount of like AI in the guts of of Gong historically back when Gong was primarily focused on on conversation intelligence and call recording. Maybe you can share a little bit about that for just so folks, you know, can understand that better. Absolutely. So I, I think you, you framed it really well. You know, Gong has been doing AI since way before it became cool. We've been in the AI space for more than seven years now. And even though we do own all the fancy AI domains and we, we know our way around AI, we never put that front and center on our website until very, very recently. And here's the reason. Um, seven years ago, when we started analyzing call conversations and uh, a couple of years later, we started analyzing emails and text messages 
messages and, and marketing touch points, and we pushed out these insights driven by AI and machine learning, what are users who are sales leaders and sales professionals and rev op leaders, what they care about is how is this going to help my job? How am I going to have a better day today because I know something I didn't know yesterday? They don't care how the bits and bytes work underneath the hood. And we suspected that AI would be intimidating for many of them. It sounds like something technical for engineers. And so we never put that on our homepage. If, if you looked at our website only six months ago, you couldn't find the word AI is almost, almost anywhere. Um, and that was the reason, and I think part of why we succeeded and moved so quickly within the sales space is because we focused on the problem that we're solving. and. I think one common mistake of product leaders or even co-founders who are product centered is that they care so much about the bells and whistles of the product that they forget that their users actually care about the problem. You know, as the old cliche goes, nobody wants to buy drills. Someone needs a hole in their wall. And so if you focus on the hole in the wall without talking about how the drill works and how many rounds per <laughs> And it can do who cares about that that's your problem not their problem their problem is the hole in the wall so we focused on the hole in the wall um, and we still are and even back then when the company started we have these old slide decks from 2015 that show the full vision of where we're now only starting to touch the tip of that iceberg which is a full platform for revenue teams to do everything from prospecting to forecasting to training to all the wonderful things and we kind of released it to the market slice after slice. Yeah. And now that OpenAI and ChatGPT and several other companies, you know, Google's Bard and others are making ChatGPT and generative AI a household term when, when my 75 year old folks are texting me about it, you know, it's <laughs> mass market, it's crossed that chasm of the early adopters and it's now in the major majority with hundreds of millions of users now that sales leaders are actively saying, yes, we have an AI strategy. We are going to adopt AI for our sales teams. And the majority of them are saying that they've either already done that. I think the latest number we surveyed was 28% of sales teams already say they're using some form of AI. And basically all the rest of them are saying we're going to do so in the next 12 months. Now we're pushing AI to the front and saying, well, great, welcome aboard. We've been doing this for over seven years. So we've got a huge head start over all the newcomers. Welcome to the club. We're glad everyone cares about this right now. And here's how you can do this with golf. Yeah. The, um, yeah, I think that like there, there is, there were the, the orgs that had like AI wash themselves like five years ago or what, what have you, um, in the absence of like a, a demonstrable use case that kind of mattered. And then there were like organizations that were doing kind of like under the covers, like, you know, as an example, doing, you know, far more performant, um, like uh, transcription of, of calls or what have you as a result of, you know, ML driven transcription or what have you. Um, you, you actually kind of alluded to this earlier um, as relates to kind of like road mapping, but also the fact that like, you know, people think about um, our, you know, might might synonymize gong with um with call recording, what have you. But you know, obviously the I forget what the acquisition was. It was like three or four, maybe even five years ago. Um, the uh, starting to consume email and calendar and kind of text message information and what have you, which is you know forms of communication, right? But then there then you guys started doing stuff with the communication as as well. And I think that was like some of the the deal inspection stuff. Um, whose name escapes? It might be called Gong Deals. Um, yeah. And, Company. Yeah, we're, we're we're very good at like making things like right on the nose here, like yeah, yeah, gong deals, right, and and gong engage, which we're going to talk about. But um, yeah, the deals piece, which is like, hey, cool, we have all this communication, we're going to help make judgments about these deals, and then you guys started doing things about those deals, which is, hey, if you add up all these deals and their relative healths and whatever, now you can start making judgments about forecasting and, and what have you. So maybe you can kind of like take people through that that kind of like journey of the, because people may not be super familiar with some of these ancillary things that, that Gong does that stacks on top of the, the that kind of like proprietary communication capture. 
Yeah, th thanks for that beautiful setup, Pete. So as I said, almost seven uh, or seven plus years ago, when, when we were looking at the landscape, even back then, AI and computers did a better job than most humans at driving a car. And we were all seeing that vision become a reality very, very quickly. Um, it, AI was doing a better job than humans at detecting tumors in an x-ray. And I, the list goes on. AI can do all these wonderful, wonderful things why do we still believe, or now we don't, but seven years ago, this was a novel idea. Why did we still believe that sales is going to remain an untouched art and craft that's never going to change and humans are going to have to continue spending their days on end updating their CRM and typing tidy little notes from how that call went and sitting one-on-one -on -one with their managers every week explaining each and every account, what the status is and what they did and what they didn't do and what they need to do next. Like People still thought that was going to be how sales is going to be run years from now. And I think by now, this sounds like an arcane idea, but, but it, it took a while to get here. So Gong had this vision very, very early on. And we knew that the day when humans can stay focused on much higher level tasks, building rapport, actually uh, uncovering pain, uh, uh, customizing a solution for said pain and problem, and letting computers take care of all the crap that we hate doing, that we're bad at doing, that we do we pro procrastinate doing, and then we do a crappy job of. Let's let the computer do all of that. And I'm talking about taking notes during the call. I'm talking about updating your manager about how the call went. I'm talking about figuring out whether we're talking to power, whether we're talking to the right people, whether we have the right contacts, whether this deal is likely to close based on patterns of winning deals on my team and my company? What else do I need to do to optimize my time and chances of this deal closing? We knew that the world is going there and we wanted to create that future. So that's when we, we started working. And you mentioned one of the three companies that we acquired over recent years. But I think what makes us a little bit different than some of the other companies in the space is that we didn't take a full-fledged product and kind of slap it on and have the users have yet another tool to have to switch back and forth to. In a recent survey, we found that the average salesperson uses 10 different tools every day, and 30% of them are constantly complaining about having to switch between those tools. So we didn't want to exasperate that problem. We wanted to simplify the problem, minimize it. And so we bought three very early stage technology companies, completely scrapped their code base, embedded the teams within our product and engineering team, took their technology and idea and understanding of their domains. You mentioned one of them around emails. There's others in different spaces like reporting and analytics and even gone for other spaces outside of revenue teams that were not quite ready to put in the prime time yet. Oh yes, the lots of fun stuff happening. And then we embedded all of that into Gong. And so now we have one, built in-house suite of products, a platform that has everything that a revenue team could need. Again, unlike other platforms where you go and you find five, six different tools that you can tell where the themes are. They're very, very visible and you still have to switch back and forth. So with Gong, you get the seamless experience from start to finish, whether you're recording call, whether you're reading the, the auto-generated, AI-generated summaries of these calls, which is a relatively new feature that is saving everyone so much time because you don't have to listen to the call anymore. You can get a summary in four or five bullet points that takes you 30 seconds to consume compared to 60 minutes of listening to the call, but you don't lose any of the important bits. And then as you also alluded to, uh, we help with deal management that then moves into forecasting and our most recent addition to the family or, or the platform is Gong Engage which is a whole new approach, an AI-based approach to prospecting. And I'm happy to unwrap that a little. Yeah, so I mean, I think that like, as you talk about disparate, like as a software designer myself, you know, software entrepreneur slash like sales leader myself, I mean, we see this with our customers. Like our, our primary user is, is a manager. Right. It's an SDR manager, it's an AE manager, you know, et cetera. And, and what, what they're really focused on is, is understanding, you know, the performance and, um, and the shortfalls and, and upsides and opportunity or, uh, opportunities for a given rep, a set of reps on their, on their team. But the really important thing, I, I have this vivid, vivid memory of this. We did like 150 customer interviews in like 2016 when we were first doing um, research for Atrium. And there was this really thoughtful guy who said, look, like the key of analytics is, and we don't use the analytics word, we call it the A word, um, is 
what, so what, and then now what? And I think that that like you could extend that to like interpretation in general and making judgments. So like to use the the kind of like uh, deals functionality in in Gong and like there's other vendors that, that approach this as well. Like we want to have some sort of data driven judgment about like what's going on with this deal. Oh, you're single threaded. Oh, you don't have a and and like any sales manager who's like been around the block like they know the patterns right like oh you're single threaded duh oh there's no next meeting on the calendar duh oh like this hasn't been touched in 15 days duh and there's probably like you know six or 12 more of those of those things but like okay you've got six reps that report to you and each of them's got 20 30 maybe 40 ops in a you know in a velocity situation cool so we're gonna do 40 across like six reps here like come on guys we're nearly 300 ops to pay attention to and to inspect that sounds terrible cool so we can do programmatic inspection that's great now what but like you're sitting in that deal inspection it's like oh you know what you're right i do need to, to email bobby oh you're right i do need to and so what ends up happening is like now like what you don't want is you don't want to have like that bucket brigade situation where all right cool boss i've got my like 10 action items or whatever and then they go off and like maybe they do those action items then maybe they don't do those action items yeah. right and uh, i think the more like fall like the more areas for drop off there are the less frequently those action items happen and, and so it, when when i um you know I'll, I'll admit that i was uh i i attended your uh the engage announcement um whenever that was and um and I was like, oh man, this makes a ton of sense, right? Because like what you want is you want consistency and execution against pipeline. I think that the two the, the two big things or some of the big challenges that organizations have had around sales engagement is like one, like how do we do in pipeline engagement, right? Like I think that that has historically been like something that's like organizations have sucked at, you know, the legacy, the, the legacy approach has been great for um, outbound, what have you, that's fine. But like, okay, what about in pipe? What about in pipe? And then the second thing, honestly, is like just getting like freaking AEs to prospect, right? Yeah. And, and, and I think that like when, when you guys started announcing what you guys were working on, I was like, okay, cool. I could totally see this cracking both of those nuts. So maybe you can talk a little bit about what, how Gong Engage goes about these things and kind of share with, with our audience on that front. Absolutely, Pete. Th thanks for the great insights on the way there. Uh, there's a lot to unpack, but, but I, I love your framework for thinking about analytics, which is very, very similar to how we think about the evolution of autonomous systems from, I think you said, what, so what, and what's next? So, so let me draw the parallels between that and autonomous systems like Gong. So the what is really a descriptive of what happened. And if you think about Gong of 2016, that's what we have. It's what happened. We allowed you for the first time to do at scale, record all your customer conversations so you could listen back and actually hear what happened, right? The next stage came two or three years later when we started helping sales professionals manage deals and we told them what you call the so what and that's when we started surfacing warnings hey you're not at power this deal is not multi-threaded this guy's back from out of office but you haven't emailed them yet this deal is in your commit for the quarter but you haven't been speaking to procurement yet why do you think this is going to close you better do something about it so that was the next stage and now with gong engage we're finally at that highest third level of the what's next and here's how we think about that what's next so we think that to create consistency and a well-oiled revenue machine, every action that needs to be taken falls into one of two buckets, right? Either you still need a human to do it because it's something very specific, very personalized that needs human judgment, or you can automate it. So that's the first triage that we go through. Can this be automated? If it can, push a reminder to the human who needs to do this and prioritize it with all the other thing that said human needs to do so that the human does everything that they need to do without letting anything fall between the cracks and doing them in the order of priority. If there's a deal that needs to close this week, that should be at the top of the list. If this is a next quarter deal, it can probably wait for next week, right? So we prioritize and remind and nudge the human to do all the things that she is uniquely qualified to do. Everything else, let's automate. And I'm talking about things like if your sales engagement system still requires you to manually 
uh, put the call disposition? Like, did this person answer or did I get to voicemail? Like, why are we asking humans that are getting six figure salaries to spend their time on doing this when a computer could do it just as easily? Um, if you're asking the human to take that one hour average 6,000 word conversation and spend 10 minutes trying to summarize it in 25 to 30 words, which is going to be completely biased and skewed, but that's beside the question, because I've yet to meet the rep who wrote, I was just not in the zone today and I failed to show value. value. <laughs> Maybe she works for you. She doesn't work for us. I haven't met her yet. So instead of doing that, why don't you just ask the AI to summarize the call in four bullet points and let the rep go back to the things that they are uniquely qualified to do as a human being. So, so that is our approach today and how we do that. Um, you know, when, when sales engagement became a category almost 10 years ago, that was a major breakthrough because it was a, a huge uh, push of automation into the hands of mostly SDRs at the time that could take an email, good or bad, often bad, and now blast it to 5,000 people. That saved them a lot of time, right? Today we couldn't but, but that, that, that saved them a lot of times. Now, 10 years later, we're no longer as excited when we get an email that says, Dear Pete, because you know that that's going to be an automated email and there's no reason to, to respond to it. But reps know this, and reps know that personalizing an email is going to have the biggest effect on whether someone's going to open that email, if someone's going to act on that email. And in fact, we, we, we recently ran a survey where buyers told us they don't even open 19 out of 20 emails. They don't even open them. And those that they do open, they usually regret opening them because they said in 90% of the cases, the email doesn't look like the rep took any effort in personalizing it to my needs and my issues right now. On the other side, we see that the sellers self-report spending up to 12 hours a week personalizing their email templates, 12 hours a week, that's almost two working days with some lunches, personalizing their emails, but that lands really, really badly in their buyer's inboxes. So it was clear <laughs> that something needed to change, right? And here's the thing. So we think that the, the right approach right now is to use generative AI to quickly draft an email that takes into account all the buying signals, more importantly, all the previous conversations anyone in your organization might have had with anyone in your buyer's organization. And good luck finding all of those if you're not using Gong. So we have all those in our system. We've analyzed over 10, sorry, over 10 billion sales emails and over 1 billion sales conversations. We take all the collective insight from that and we know how to craft an effective sales email. If you tell ChatGPT, create a sales email for me, ChatGPT does not know how to A-B test Subject line. It'll be fine. It'll be it'll be mid, right? Like it'll be like a prototypical like you know sales email, but it won't have any context on on like it won't have any customer or prospect context. Exactly, exactly. And not to mention the 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 privacy and and security Pandora's box that you're opening just by uploading sensitive information about your organization or your buyer's organization organization into Chat GPT. Because in case anyone in you know, of our listeners didn't know that, as soon as you do that, that is now used as learning for that ChatGPT engine for other uh, maybe competing companies and products. But that's beside the point. Uh, let, let's pretend it is it is safe for a minute. Um, and, and of course, the, the solution is to you. Be, it just won't be performant. It'll be, it'll be generic. It'll be vanilla. It, it'll be very, very vanilla because ChatGPT has many, many advantages. It was trained on everything from Shakespeare plays to Super Bowl commercials. It was not trained on sales conversation because those are proprietary. Um, Gong happens to have the largest set of sales conversations in the industry. Like when Harvard Business Reviews writes about sales conversations or questions, they come to us to use our data and insights because they know we have the largest data set. Why would you be using a generic AI system that was not trained on sales conversation. It doesn't understand the domain. It doesn't have the accuracy. It doesn't have the enterprise grade security. So some of the things that we're changing is using generative AI, but in the right way that was purpose built for sales that really understands sales conversations. The second thing that we're changing from the old legacy systems is that the old legacy systems assume that you have a number of leads to reach out to, and they did a pretty poor job of understanding which of those leads actually work for the same company or even for the same group of companies. And then you have these situations where you've got someone in SDR and someone in sales and someone in CS and they're talking to different people or even worse to the same person in the same organization and they're
system won't warn them against this and won't easily show them, hey, Michelle over in SDR is already talking to this person. Talk to her before you reach out and blast this poor guy with a cold email. So we've built our system from the ground up as an account centered system, not a lead centered system, which allows you to do multi-threading the right way. The second thing that I, I already mentioned is the AI driven automation and guidance. Automation for everything that can be automated, which is a lot, a lot more than most people are automating these days. I already mentioned right. call summarization. I mentioned call disposition. There's so many things that drafting an email, all that can be automated and guidance for everything that the human still needs to do themselves. And then the final uh, third big differentiator is the centralized workflows and data. We believe that the entire revenue team and in modern sales organization, um, like those that, that are in MSP, they, they will all agree that revenue team is now far beyond the AEs. Revenue team starts with prospecting, usually done by SDRs and marketing, moves on to sales and ends up in customer success, which are just as part of the revenue organization than th as their sales counterparts are. So if they're not working on the same system, you're providing a bad experience for the sellers because they don't know what happened before they got the account, right? right? Just think about all the time wasted in the handshake meetings between an SDR and an AE when they transfer the account or one AE to another when they inevitably transfer ownership or between the AE and the CS once that prospect becomes a customer. Imagine if you had this all on a single system where you had all the context, all the previous conversations, all the customer needs, and you actually didn't have to ask them the same question for the third time. How amazing would that be? And that, of course, leads to a better buying experience, which is what we're all trying to do to retain our customers, make them happy, make them delighted, and making sure that they want to continue to spend the little budget that they have this year on our system. So by consolidating all of that, or as we call it, gong solidating, you have a simpler tech stack, you provide a better buyer experience and ultimately uh, a better seller and buyer experience. Gong solidating. You heard it here first. No. Um, <laughs> there have been, gong has had some bangers. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, goodbye opinion, hello reality. Yeah, that uh, and that uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if this is, uh, I don't know if this is in that the same sort of uh, pantheon as as. No, as no, that. Not jokingly, you know me. Um, I, I think the, um, um, I think one thing that we hear, so like a, a really kind of key use case that we see for our customers at Atrium, um, is because like they're very much focused on a couple core things, right? Like, hey. Like, are we engaged in sufficient quantity and quality of selling activity on our SDR teams, our AE teams? So like Atrium can help, you know, measure and manage that. Are we generating enough pipe? Cool. You know, are we progressing it, right, in aggregate across, you know, all of our, like this, all of our AEs and of course all of our AE teams and are we working it well? Like what's our pipe hygiene look like? And these are all, of course, all reflected in various, various metrics that indicate whether this is happening or, or not happening. And, um, but another really key use case is AE prospecting. Um, and we hear this all the time, like how do we get a pipe gen culture going? And I guess it's related to the activity and also the pipeline generation, but it's like AE sourced. And I think the funny thing is, is that like the, the existing uh, sales engagement solutions, all, like they've sold a lot of AE seats. Like for sure. Now the question is whether or not those actually have been used to, because I think it's really the goes back to the context switching, which is like as an account executive, your calendar looks very different than an SDR's calendar. You've got three or four meetings and like maybe you have an hour block in between. And what are you going to do? Like you're going to get into like, you know, you know, get full full bore into like a prospecting mindset in like, you know, this hour long block before you have a 15 minute prep for the ne next call. Very difficult. Right. And so it's unsurprising that um, a lot of these organizations who have purchased, who have gone wall to wall in um, with, with sales engagement solutions, haven't really seen the outcomes um, that they were anticipating in a AE land. And so what I would love for you to do is like maybe share a little bit on, on that. Go ahead. I just want to jump in because back in March, so this was just a few months ago, we, we ran a big survey and uh, we asked hundreds of users of legacy sales engagement systems, first, 
how happy and excited are you about your current sales engagement solution? And uh, you might be able to guess the answer, but uh, only 12%, 12% of sales leaders and 16, that's one six percent of AEs and SDRs are happy with their current sales engagement solution, which is an abysmal number to look at if, if you're trying to optimize for NPS and happy users. Secondly, uh, we, we asked specifically the AEs how far do you use these sales engagement system? And about 80% of them said to stop using them after that first meeting is booked. So they only use them for blasting out prospects with emails. As soon as they confirm the meeting, they move on to other systems. Why would you be paying for a system that they stop using once that first meeting is booked? They don't use it to manage deals. They don't use it to manage pipeline. They don't use it for coaching. They just use it to blast the emails to get that first meeting. You can get that now from an end-to-end -end platform that your entire team will be using from prospecting to deal close and even to renewals and expansions. Yeah. I, I, would, I would be shocked that that the AEs like the the, the the AEs are actually using it in, ahead of that first meeting. They're probably like, oh yeah, we're totally using we're we're totally anyway. Just because I I you know we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of customers and like I see the stats and like the and you would see much higher email volumes if uh, if if you had pervasive um, prospecting behavior across the across AEs. You have some. Right? especially the ones who are like recent SDR promos. And so maybe you can actually speak a little bit to that because I think that like, like, look, we're, we're joking right now. Like, oh, he is, they don't like to prospect, right? Um, but like, I think if you think about it from like what their calendar, we have a, a phrase here at Atrium, that calendar is destiny. AEs have, you know, calendars that are studded with different meetings, whereas an SDR can get into like a two or three hour block where they're just like ripping through calls and emails and so on and so forth right and so i think that like essentially folding prospecting into an aes workflow is yeah. something that like it, like jumping from zoom or whatever to this other thing is is very difficult so maybe you can kind of speak a little bit to how um how you guys kind of help address that so you're absolutely right, Pete. Every survey ever done on how AEs spend their time, you can look at the Salesforce surveys, the IDC surveys, any surveys that was done on how AEs spend their time, um, estimate that 70 to 77% of the AEs time is spent on non-selling activities. I'm going to say that again. 70 to 70%, 70 to 77 percent of an AE's time is spent on non-selling activities. That is the time that they're sitting in internal meetings, that they're writing up their latest call summary in Salesforce, that they're choosing that manual call disposition, that they're explaining to their manager what happened on that call. All of those non-selling activities, that is what the AEs hate doing, and that's what's keeping them from creating more pipeline and closing more deals. So the way that we are changing that is by number one automating away everything that the rep no longer needs to do manually because the ai actually does it better or just as good as the ae freeing the ae to do the more important things that they are uniquely qualified to do as human beings so I talked about a lot of those things that we can automate away. That's already clearing up a lot of time on the AE's calendar and giving them more customer facing time so they can now actually follow up and talk to those customers because AEs love being on customer calls. This is what they live for. This is the career path that they chose. And they good are talkers. qualified to do that. They're, you know it's more important than good talkers. It's good listeners. I can get into the research on that. Um, and and here, here's a, a cliffhanger. Good question askers. We actually checked uh, gender differences between uh, men and women on listening and patience and question asking. And uh, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll give the spoiler at the end of the session on who is better at those things. But, but back to, to your original question. So we're automating away everything that can be automated, freeing up a lot more calendar blocks for the A's to do what they want to, what they're passionate about, and what they're good at, which is customer facing time. And then the second thing we're doing is making sure we help them prioritize that time so nothing falls in between the cracks and they have this activity hub within Gong now that has what we call assists, which is all these dozen different things that they need to do today in the order in which we recommend doing them that is reflected in their pipeline, in the urgency, in the complexity of everything that they need to do to maximize the deals that they're going to close and the pipeline that they're going to create. Yeah. And, and I think that one 
kind of big challenge that organizations have had as well is that like historically it kind of takes um some some serious elbow grease to get the relevant contacts kind of like dialed in right it's just like you've got this magnificent like uh ferrari or like magnificent like you know f1 car here but like actually loading it with gas is kind of a pain in the ass if you will um and and there's you know there are some solutions out there that have um you know data Im embedded in them not as much as you think because like i think data businesses are are pretty pretty tough like data businesses workflow businesses are kind of like they're very different animals um but i know that you guys have done some stuff to make it fairly trivial such that like the humans that i might want to engage whether i have an open opportunity and i'm post first meeting or if it's just like the account that i'm um like it's a named account that i'm supposed to be penetrating and like maybe to date i've kind of been like you know procrastinating and procrastinating that versus like opening up the the next tab of my browser and going into my data provider and really going around like hunting for that i think right. you guys have done some stuff to make it a lot like more trivial for someone just like can go shopping for shopping for humans that i care we, about we have we have because you know this is a personal pain that i felt uh i've used probably every contact and account database out there uh every one of them and I, I remember using one when I needed to reach IT buyers in the UK. There was one specialized vendor that did just that, but they were crap as soon as I was looking for North American contacts. And then I had to buy another database for North America, and then I moved to a different industry to look for buyers, and then that database became useless because I found out that more than half of the contact details in there were crap. And I thought that there must be a better way, right? And so we found that many of our customers, we, we have over 4,000 organizations using Gong across hundreds of thousands of users, and they constantly complain about that problem. I don't know who I should be talking to. I don't know what their contact details is, and I don't know in which database I can find the best contact details. And I'm probably only subscribing to one, two, maybe three of the databases, but maybe the best contact details are in a different database. Oops, sorry, my screen went dark, but it's back. Yeah. So we found a better solution. And instead of you having to buy a single database and being stuck with that for the rest of your life, whether the scope and accuracy of the data is what you need for each and every account, we did something different. So it's a two-step process. Number one, we analyze your team's winning deals. And we understand who are the specific personas that typically buy. And if you are not currently engaged with that specific persona, let's say you're selling to RevOps, but we see that you're only talking to sales enablement, we can say, hey, you should really talk to RevOps in this, at this account. The second thing that we do is we go and we search through our partner contact databases and we surface recommended contacts. And with a single click of a button without leaving Gong, you can purchase those contact details and put that person into your flow, which is what we call the, the engagement flow of reaching out to someone using email, calls, LinkedIn, social media, et cetera. So we're both helping you understand who you need to be talking to, recommending the contact, and then surfacing to you the best place to buy it from our different partner databases so you can buy that contact and put them into a flow with a click of a button. And so in that case, you might have um, like, some organization might have you know an existing data relationship with with some vendor or what have you um and that's cool like maybe you've got like an apollo license or or what have you for your organization but in this case you could and so you could leverage that inside of gong but secondarily it sounds like if if for whatever reason apollo doesn't have the coverage in the uk or or what have you some ancillary data data provider could also be used in a federated fashion within within gong yes so right? we're gradually adding more and more databases so we have partnerships with apollo that you mentioned with lead iq we've been working with cognizant and clearbit and others and we're gradually um, expanding our partnerships with them to make their contacts very readily available to all of our users so that you can buy just what you need and at a preferred price so why would you spend tens of thousands of dollars on credits that your team is probably not going to use uh, because when, when you buy these credits, you, you're paying for more than you need more often than not. So we're allowing you to buy just a little bit that you need from the different vendors, getting the actual contact that you want to reach out to to win your deals. 
I love it. Well, well, uh, very exciting stuff. And, and I think um, it's funny. I, maybe it was an accident. Maybe it wasn't an accident earlier where you mentioned that there's kind of more stuff coming in the future. But I think that, you know, we're seeing this, um, you know, there are certain use cases that really matter for organizations. It's get the meeting on the calendar in an automated and scalable way, manage the pipeline in a, uh, you know, in, a, in an automated and, and scalable way, but high quality, obviously, maybe high quality is left something to be desired on the getting the meeting on the calendar his, historically, um, and, and success our our clients in a in an automated and scaled way and of course then manage that whole process which is of course something that like we at atrium are very passionate about it's like helping organizations manage those those reps effectively um and i think you're seeing a lot of vendors kind of like where they had you know kind of like weaker spots they're kind of like muscling up there and um but adding like a full-throated email client and like action system to what historically has not had that, that's like a, a not a trivial lift. And so when when you guys announced uh, Engage, I was like, holy Mac, because my last software company, Talent Bin, was kind of like Gong Engage or like Apollo or what have you for recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a we had a database component to it um, that was like populated by you know crawling all these different sites and consolidating these composite profiles, and then we had a very lightweight we had like a, a lightweight marketing automation light solution for for essentially recruitment um, engagement and like boy oh boy email systems are they're a bear cat, um, and so when you guys shit that I was like holy mackerel that was non trivial engineering uh, effort. Good thing you have such a uh, impressive engineering organization uh, in the do. United States and also in Israel. We, we do. We have hundreds of engineers and product managers that are working day in and day out to make sure we provide the best experience with the best technologies to solve the business problems of, of our customers. And you, you, know, you alluded to Gong for recruiting. We, we're in this fortunate position that we get requests every day for different use cases outside of the revenue teams. Gong for recruiting, Gong for um, legal, Gong for procurement. And we just have to choose what is going to be uh, the next focus area. So this year, we're definitely still very much focused on revenue. And we always will be, uh, but you can expect to see more news coming soon from Gong as we uh, get back to maybe a more stable economy when companies are back to recruiting more people, and then we'll be rolling out um, additional solutions for those teams. Yeah, it's, it, whenever uh, it's like, how much innovation are we willing to like fund? You know, it's kind of predicated on on interest rates. So you know, yeah, in, uh, in a non-expansion product, right? You, you've got to get timing right. Yeah, for sure. But it's all, it's all reactive to the customers, right? Like if, if customers are like, hey, look, we've like, we went and we kind of like filled our plate and now we got to like actually digest this and make sure that we're adopting it and so on and so forth. And then, you know, maybe interest rates go down a little bit and everything kind of like, and it's like, oh, well, now we can get a little bit more speculative, right? Like that, that $25,000 or $50,000, you know, uh, uh, innovation budget or whatever maybe it's now 100 maybe it's now 200 versus like right now maybe it's like 10 right so that's exactly well so i guess we'll have to have you back when when you're you know when you're down to talk about those those new things that are going to be you know where to find me, Pete. i'm always happy to come on um and and you're right this year we're definitely seeing customers go back to basics you know that that innovation budget that experiments budget it's coming down they want to make sure that they're actually getting value from systems they already bought or get rid of them and where possible consolidate or gong solidate your favorite new term onto fewer systems <laughs> Your face, feed your face, <laughs> to go on on fewer systems and get all the value that they need while spending less budget, providing a better seller experience and a better buying experience. Um, but I, I owe you uh, an answer to the cliffhanger. Uh, who's the better listener oh, yeah. and who has the better basic sales skills from listening to patients to question asking? As many of our viewers here might have already guessed, it is women. Uh, you take the cake every single time. Uh, we checked literally every basic sales talent needed to succeed from asking the right questions, from shutting up when you need to shut up, not interrupting the other side, which I'm still learning and I'm definitely not there. Um, and, and women excel 
and and overachieve on every one of those things. You can find all that and and other studies that we did, uh, like what happens when you pair a woman AE with a woman buyer versus all other combinations of men versus women, uh, where where it gets interesting. So go find that at gong.io slash blog. That's gong.io slash blog, where you can find hundreds of interesting articles. I warn you, if you go down that rabbit hole, you might not do anything else today. But I, there's lots was, of interesting. I, I was just gonna say, I mean, the gong content is is just unparalleled. Um, wonderful. Well, Udi, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Uh, thanks for hanging out and getting briefed on what's going on in Gongland. Um, obviously, there are a lot more uh, sessions here at Camp Modern Sales. Um, but, you know, obviously, Udi's was the highlight. So, Udi, thank you very much. And uh, everyone, uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, the summit, okay? <laughs>